welcome to Travelog. I'm Liu Changying. Today we are going to explore a very special place in southern China. It's one of the first points in the country to be exposed to other cultures, and now its name is associated with slot machines and roulette. Yes, it's Macau. But as you soon will discover, gambling would be too small a word to describe a place like this. It all began in the mid 16th century when Portuguese seafarers stumbled across a great port linking the trade routes to China, Japan, India, and the Western Hemisphere. The Macau you see now is definitely different from what the first batch of Portuguese saw 500 years ago. It has evolved from a couple of villages and markets into a popular travel destination. However, you can see exotic traces of the Portuguese everywhere in Macau. From the azure tiled street signs, to the colonial architecture, to the biracial Macaonese. At the same time, the locals still maintain Chinese traditions that have been quietly merging with the Western influences. This lasting legacy means it's a great place to see how the West and East can and have intersected. There are something like 20 churches and dozens and dozens of different temples in Macau, but the region takes up just 23 square kilometers. where the Portuguese seafarers landed some five centuries ago. They were told the name of the place was A Macau, so the Portuguese decided to call this place Macau. But in reality, A Macau was the name for the temple over there, the Ama Temple, where the local people worship the goddess of Ama. So you could well say the temple is older than Macau itself. Ama is the goddess of the sea, and statues of her are a regular sight in coastal areas. Here, she looks out on the horizon as she has done for centuries. Every year on the 23rd day of the third lunar moon, the locals hold a big celebration in her honor. The Ama temple is the most popular in Macau. It's obvious when you look at the amount of incense being offered. The people use a special kind of incense that burns for up to two weeks. You can pay your own respects if you want. Write the names of your family on a piece of red paper and hand it up with the incense. The temple is also a good place to find out more about your future. <laughs> this is the fortune telling. You close your hand, drop this way down here. This one, good one. You will make a fortune in the casino. <laughs> fortune telling, fortune. This is the fortune telling. This is the fortune telling. This is the Okay, well, uh, this one, you speak French? Come see, come see. 50-50. For a more detailed look into your future, there's the fortune-telling sticks. Shake the container until one of the sticks falls out. The temple keeper interprets it for you for 10 yuan. Telling fortunes and selling incense are two of their main sources of income. 
in the 16th century, the power of Ama extended to cover those seafarers from the other side of the world. They also brought their own beliefs and built shrines to their own faith. One of the churches, well, the ruins of it, has become the hallmark of Macau. This is the remaining facade of St. Paul's Cathedral, dating back to the early 1600s. People once said it was second in grandeur only to St. Peter's in Rome. It is also the site of the first Western-style university in the Far East. The cathedral was all but destroyed by fire during a disastrous typhoon in early 19th century. One of the many churches that did survive and is much alive today is San Dominic's. It dates from the early 17th century. It has an impressive collection of saintly effigies carved from ivory and wood and is home to the image of Our Lady Fatima. The image is paraded around the streets during the annual Fatima festival. But San Dominic's also has a violently dramatic past. In 1644, a military officer who supported the Spanish against the Portuguese was murdered at the altar during Mass. There are other, more modest, but equally graceful churches. This is the chapel of Our Lady of Gia. Legend has it that during the Dutch invasion of 1622, the image of the Virgin left the chapel and held out her robe to deflect the enemy's bullets. The present chapel dates from 1637. These murals were discovered during some recent renovations. You can see the Chinese influence in the patterns of what appeared to be peonies a popular flower in China. Standing alongside the chapel is China's oldest lighthouse. This hilltop called the Gia Hill is China's highest point and the best place to keep an eye out for either an enemy or a typhoon. You know what are these? These are called cold of storms. This is number eight, and this is number nine, and this is number 10. And when this is up, people don't go to work, children don't go to school, and you are advised to stay at somewhere safe. Where the East meets the West, people carefully preserve every bit of their history. In this small region, there are 12 museums, and with 25 Macau Badaga, you can buy a museum pass, which covers half of them. This museum gives you a glimpse of how people here took the comforts from both the East and West. There is a living room, dining room, and kitchen on the first floor, and bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. The layout of the whole building follows the Western tradition, while there is a distinctively oriental influence in the furnishing. Much of the furniture has been donated by the locals.
The museum's five buildings were erected around the turn of the century. Other things on display include traditional costumes from the different parts of Portugal. There are a dozen museums devoted to different themes. They give insights into everything from how people used to live to sacred art to history. But I had a need for speed and headed for the Macau Grand Prix Museum. For the best part of 15 years, the Macau Grand Prix has been a stepping stone to Formula One for many top drivers. All the machines are the real thing; they've all been steered to victory in Macau. The legendary Art and Senna wore this outfit and drove this car when he won the championship in 1983. Seven years later, Michael Schumacher burned around the circuit and this machine to become champion. The Grand Prix is a Formula Three event and held every November. The circuit runs for six kilometers around the picturesque street. And is considered one of the most challenging international courses. At that time of year, the pace of the city accelerates, and you find the place turn into a confusing commotion of excitement. Just across the hall from the Grand Prix Museum is something a little more sedate: the Wine Museum. There are hundreds of wines on show here, all from Portugal. The oldest being a bottle of 1815 Porto. I'm not sure how it would go now with a nice steak. And remember to check out these posters. Each one stands for one famous winery. You can also get a feel for a real cellar and see how people use things 